because we are kings and our words matter. You don't want to feel small before the world. You don't want to be put down by this world. You want to be on top of the world. You want to be win. You want to win and be an overcomer over this world. And I tell you, my friend, do this. Take the mirror of God's word and keep looking at it. At the fact that you are more than a conqueror every day. And the more you look at it, I tell you, day by day, from glory to glory, you will be changed into that more than conqueror in the outer life. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice.
give him all your worship right now. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. God has got a higher kind of life planned for us. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. It's amazing. God has prepared for us something wonderful that I has not seen, ears have not heard, and minds have never comprehended. God has prepared something beyond your wildest imagination. When it's talking about, when the Bible talks about how God took the people of Israel to a land of milk and honey, it says he took them to the best among the land of milk and honey. He didn't just take them to a land of milk and honey. He went and found what is the best among the land of milk and honey. God always wants the best, not the second best, third best. He prepares the best. A lot of people don't understand that. They think God gives you a bad deal. And the devil gives you a good deal. It's exactly the opposite. God gives you such a good deal. You could never even imagine having a life like that. God has prepared for you and I before the foundation of the world. A life that is far better than you could ever imagine or you can ever deserve in your life. Now, God has prepared it. And no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, no mind has ever comprehended these things. But verse 10, But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. See, now God has not only prepared this wonderful life, He also leads us into that. That's the Christian life. He not only prepares something and hides it somewhere, so that he can play hide and seek and you know hope you find it you know before you die or something like that no he prepares it and he gives you a way so that you can exactly find it and understand it and come to it and enjoy it so god has revealed them unto us by his spirit so the spirit of god is the provision that god has given god has sent his spirit so that he can reveal these things to us for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. See, the spirit of God knows God better and the things of God better than any man. Now look at the next verse. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now look at verse 12. But now we have received not the spirit of the world. Once again, look at the word world. Now we have received not the spirit of the well, everybody say world. <laughs> we have not received, see, as Christian believers, we have not received the spirit of the world. What is the spirit of the world? The spirit of the world is the thing that gets you caught up in that mess, in that corruption. Makes you live that kind of life that is there in the world. Makes you rebel against God. Makes you go against God's principles. Makes you think that you know everything, that you don't need God, and you can make your own life, and so on. That's the spirit of the world. That's the destructive spirit. He says, now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. We are living here, but we've got the spirit of God. The spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. See, we are living in this world, but we have from God someone coming and living here so that we can no, everybody say no. No, so that we can know the things that are freely given to us by God. What an amazing thing. See, God prepares a life and then prepares this person just to lead us into that kind of life. So I tell you, my friend, you and I have no excuse why we should not walk in victory, in absolute victory in this world. All this excuse about, well, we are still in this world, brother, and, you know, we are still in this sinful, all that is nonsense, you see. Then why did the Holy Spirit come? Why did God send the Holy Spirit? Why did he give us the word? Why did the Bible say, so that we may escape the corruption that is in the world? Just because you live in the world, you don't have to be caught up in this vicious cycle and be taken for a ride and be destroyed and ruined by this world. You can live in this world and be above this world. 
you can live in this world and live about this world and win over this world and everything that the world tries to do to you you can live successfully in this world that's what it means all right now turn to romans chapter 12 how does it happen it happens by the renewing of the mind how does it happen it happens when we begin to be changed in the way that we think and be changed in our knowledge concerning the things of god look at verse 2 be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind notice that word transformed by the renewing of your mind be transformed why that ye may prove or that you may live in what is that good acceptable and perfect will of god so that you may live in the perfect will of god the bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind you see if you're going to think the same way that you've been thinking the worldly thinking see we're raised with the worldly thinking we're born in this world we're raised in this world until we we're born again so many years have been spent so we're full of the world in the mind so when we come to god we need to renew our mind we need to get our mind to become a spiritual mind and not be a worldly mind the worldly mind says well i got a solution to this problem this is how everybody solves this problem but a spiritual mind says no i got another solution to the problem this is how god wants me to solve this problem right so you got to get a spiritual mind in order to live in the perfect will of god now perfect will of god is the perfect way to live <laughs> you can't get anything better than that when you begin to understand god in the right way when you begin to get the right thoughts inside of you then what happens there is a transformation that takes place because of your new kind of thinking there is a transformation that takes place on the inside that produces a life of success on the outside this is how god works now we cooperate with god because god has sent the holy spirit god has sent the word the word must go in there the word must fill us the word must occupy our mind cleanse it cleanse it of all the old junk and fill it with the new stuff be totally renewed and renovated completely cleansed from all the bad stuff cleansed from all the wrong ways so that the ways of god becomes our ways once you do that i'll tell you you become a different person it is such an important thing because the will or uh, there's the soul involves the intellect emotions and the will and will is such an important thing you know without the will you can you cannot go anywhere i can know the truth but only if i willfully accept the truth i can be changed i can know the truth that jesus is the savior but i got to willfully make a decision to receive jesus as my savior i got to use my will and make a decision to accept jesus as my savior in order to be saved just knowing the truth is not enough i must be able to exercise my will so god is interested in this realm called the mind the intellect emotions and the will that is part of our soul and wants to change it so that we may walk in the perfect will we may walk in the victory so that we even though we live in this world we don't get destroyed by this world ruined by this world we live from inside out that is we are changed inside by this this transformation the word transformation comes from the word metamorphosis metamorphosis is a word they use for how the butterfly comes into being you know from a cocoon you know the whole process of how a butterfly comes into a being is what is called metamorphosis that word is used here and it is used in two other places it means this if you understand the if you understand the, what it means it will really help you in the second place where it is used is where jesus on the mount of transfiguration was transfigured before peter john and james the three disciples all of a sudden they look at jesus and they see him in all of his glory Now why didn't they see him before because he was clothed veiled in flesh his flesh was covering the glory that was inside what he was really inside they could not see outside 
he was looking like an ordinary human being so they never saw him as the son of god the glorious son of god eternal son of god on that mountain something happened what is inside became transparent became began to shine out god opened the veil a little bit and let it shine so that these fellows can see the third place where it is used is in second corinthians and i'll read this and we'll close with that second corinthians and this is about us second corinthians chapter 3 let me read to you verse 17 and 18 now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the lord now this is what is beholding in a glass the glory of the lord i don't have the time to read the whole context but if you read the context it's talking about the word of god the word of god that we have in our hand is like a mirror the glass literally must be translated as mirror so it says with open face we all behold as in a glass the glory of the lord now suppose i'm having a mirror in my hand i look in the mirror what will i see i'll see my face right that's what we use mirrors for <laughs> so you look in the mirror whoever is looking into it that's whose face you'll see in the mirror but this is a spiritual mirror the word of god is a spiritual mirror so you don't see this face you see your inner self the real face really who you are have you ever seen really who you are you got to get to this mirror see that's the problem a lot of people have not seen really who they are they have seen this face and they are standing before that mirror and they are just you know cleaning it up and brushing it up and you know smearing it with all this stuff and it takes hours and hours and hours and this one just takes 2 minutes and you know they close they don't even look into it properly the word of god is referred to it uh, referred to as a mirror here as well as in first peter chapter 1 and so on is referred to as a mirror this is a real mirror here you must look more than you look in the real uh, the other mirror <laughs> because this really does something to change you of course we need to look into the other mirror also you know otherwise sometimes it's unbearable <laughs> but what i'm saying is looking into this mirror is a f- far more fruitful thing to do because it causes a tremendous change to come about when you look into this mirror you are seeing your face really who you are in christ that is what you're saying seeing what are you seeing it says we behold as in a glass the glory of the lord it doesn't say we behold you as you are in, in christ no it says you are beholding the glory of the lord why does it say it like that because that is what you are in christ when you see yourself really on the inside you see the glory of the lord what a different picture from what they've told us you're a dirty rotten, rotten sinner you know no good worthless you know i used to believe all that but when i started looking into this mirror this mirror started telling me i am full of the glory of the lord i'm a new creation i'm born again all things are passed away all things have become new i've never seen it really until i've seen the mirror here this mirror shows me how clean i am how glorious my inside is how wonderful this new creation is it is the glory of the lord i see So when I look in this mirror and look at myself I see the glory of the Lord and as I'm looking at it I'm changed into the same image from glory to glory that means in a greater and greater way I'm say changed into that same image into that which image into that glory image I am changed even as by the spirit of the Lord let me let me explain this to you when I'm looking at it I'm seeing my insights that is who i am in christ and i am surprised i'm holy i'm a new creation born again child of god all things are passed away all things have become new it's wonderful the glory of the lord and as i keep looking at it this sunday i came to church and i heard about how i'm more than a conqueror that's in the mirror the mirror tells me i'm more than a conqueror i see it and i go back monday to saturday i keep seeing it again I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. And as I keep looking into this, I really become changed 
from glory to glory, step by step, in a greater and greater measure, I become a more than a conqueror in real life. Whatever I am on the inside, that I become on the outside. I am living now from inside out. I am already a more than a conqueror on the inside, but now since I've been looking at who I am and meditating upon it and keep looking at it, the more I keep looking at it, the more I am changed into that same image. You want to walk in victory? You want to be an overcomer? You want to be above this world? You want to defeat this world and not the world defeating you all the time? You don't want to feel small before the world. You don't want to be put down by this world. You want to be on top of the world. You want to be win. You want to win and be an overcomer over this world. And I tell you, my friend, do this. Take the mirror of God's word and keep looking at it. At the fact that you are more than a conqueror every day. And the more you look at it, I tell you, day by day, from glory to glory, you will be changed into that more than conqueror in the outer life. What is on the inside will come outside. This is what transformation is all about. This is what happened to Jesus. Whatever is on the inside was revealed outside. And the Bible says, renew, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When it says that, it says, get the word of God, put it in your heart, keep looking at it into this mirror until you are transformed. Until you become like that person. You are already more than a conqueror. But you need to live like more than a conqueror. When will it happen? When you keep looking at it, you will really become more than a conqueror.
Jesus' name.